as a psychologist and sex therapist, I've had to sort through just how do you affect, how do you work change, you know? And we oftentimes say it's better if it's internally motivated rather than externally imposed. What I call an inside out process, an inside out process. And I would like to apply this, gang, to from my Christian faith to my personal relationship with God and, and, and think with me a little bit about how so often I come from a conservative background. So often with sexual behaviors and thoughts, sexual behaviors especially, we just really tried to ban them. You know, we would try to see, well, don't do this and don't do that. And so if you, if you think with me the inside out, let's pretend like there's a little inner circle and I'm gonna define it in a minute and, and, and unpack it, but that that would be the God circle. And then another circle outside of that one that would be our attitudes and our thoughts and, and, and so our heart attitudes. And then the farthest outside circle would be our behaviors and our actions. Well, in my, in my Christian background, sexually, what was done was basically we would try to ban the outer circle, what we hope outside in, what we hoped was if we could regulate behaviors enough, then we would really start to create and help people think through a more inner circle of getting the right heart attitudes, and that would in turn help them understand God better. But, but can you realize that when things are externally imposed, externally motivated, then indeed what happens is, is that if someone isn't out there regulating it, it doesn't happen very well. Now we, we talk about, this is not just sexual stuff. I mean, we talk about like self-esteem. We would like you to have your self-esteem more internally motivated. God fearfully and wonderfully made you, little circle. I'm gonna accept his verdict in my heart attitude, accept that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm going to act unselfishly and be able to act outside rather than my whole self-esteem is based on how many people compliment me and how many people affirm me. Inside out versus outside in. So looking again at the sexual behaviors, so often people would like me to say, how far can I go? What can I do? What's okay? When am I starting to use someone? What's wrong? What's right? I think a better way to look at it is inside out. I think the better way to look at it would be, let's look at times at, uh, Remember the little, let's look at the God circle. And this again is my theology. Some of you are here and, and don't have the same faith. But in my theology, God really created us to have a relationship with him. And he is able to do that through Jesus. So right in the middle of that little circle was Jesus and his ability to have a relationship with me and the Holy Spirit coming into my life and unpacking truth and guiding me into what would be truth. So I start with God and his principles and his sexual economy and try to see if, and, and allow him to really influence and affect the next circle of my heart attitudes. And then it's amazing what happens to the outer circle of behaviors. For example, let's just take a scripture like 1 Corinthians um, 13, 4, where it says, love is kind, love is patient. Love isn't rude, it doesn't take advantage of another. Or another passage, it says, don't just think about yourself, think about other people. Learn to be unselfish if you wanna be loving. Okay, inner circle, God is unselfish, God is creative, God is loving, God is kind. I'm trying to put on God. I'm trying to allow Jesus to influence me and help me be the character, help me be the person that I would like to be in this circle of my heart attitudes. So if I really learn to be loving, unselfish, and patient, can you see how that will have a powerful, a much more powerful impact on my behaviors than if I just try to ban behaviors? Because in my conservative background, when I was growing up, we were okay as long as the sex police were out, as long as there was, you know, at camp, there was some monitor that was there monitoring in the college where I went to. We had dorm rooms where there was a dorm supervisor. I mean, there was a room supervisor and a floor supervisor and they would set the rules in place and they would make sure that they were imposed. But you can imagine what happened when people, when the kids went on vacation where they didn't have anything external and it wasn't as internally motivated, it just didn't work. So. When you think about sexual values and when you think about sexual behaviors and when you ask questions like, 
how far can I go, or what's appropriate, let me encourage you to really think inside out, to think, what would be God's heart on this matter? What, what, what would really be his character and his, that he wants to live out through me? And how could I put that on so that when I look at someone, I'm not just objectifying, I'm looking at them three-dimensionally, I'm giving them a life, and I'm really allowing them to have, I'm, I am having the hard attitudes that really polices my self-behaviors, I mean my sexual behaviors, not because of what someone else is telling me, but because of what I've learned and what I value. So. I think if we can really learn to, to do life and to do relationships inside out, we'll be so much more successful and have such better intimacy and friendships and, and, and create a sexuality that really thrives.